Now, the reason I'm going to talk about this one specific topic is because it is extremely common. It affects between 30 and 50% of the population. And most of these people do not have any idea that they have this problem. And it has to do with a genetic mutation. And since 30 to 50% of the people watching this probably have this problem, uh, it's very important to know more about it. And it involves this one gene called MTHFR. And it's a gene for a very specific enzyme. And the enzyme that this gene activates is the MTHFR enzyme. Surprise, they call this gene the detox gene, but it does a lot more. It's involved in creating neurotransmitters like adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, GABA. And it's also involved in hormonal regulation. But today I'm going to focus in on the detoxification um, part of this enzyme. If you have a mutation or some type of alteration with this specific gene, and you can get it tested, you're going to lose between 25 to 80% of the function of that gene. I mean, just think about this for a second. We are bathed in all sorts of chemicals, hormones, toxins, pesticides, heavy metals, chemicals that alter our endocrine system. They're called endocrine disruptors, molds, fungus, all these toxins, right? And if you have a situation where your ability to get rid of these chemicals are turned down 25 to 80%, think about how that would affect you. Now, it might not affect you if you live a completely clean life, right? No exposure to chemicals, everything is super clean, your diet is great, but that might not be the situation 100% of the time. So what this gene does is it helps you uh, methylate things. And basically, methylation involves adding this thing to certain molecules, this methyl group, which helps things get activated. It kind of basically just helps you break down chemicals it helps you make neurotransmitters, helps repair the DNA. So very simply, it's something added to some biochemical pathway that allows it to work correctly. And this gene revolves around folate, which is a B vitamin. And so you have a great difficulty converting the folic acid to the active form of folic acid, which is folate. And this is why it's very, very dangerous to consume a lot of synthetic folic acid, because you're going to build this up and it's going to act like a toxin and it's not going to be able to convert into the form that you need to do the various functions. And so what are the consequences? Well, the more toxins you're exposed to, okay, the more free radical damage you're going to have, the more oxidation, the more inflammation, fibrosis, which can lead to a cirrhosis in the liver. It can also lead to insulin resistance. It can also lead to a fatty liver. Also, this gene involves choline and without choline, you can't make acetylcholine, which is necessary for the parasympathetic nervous system, the system that's supposed to calm you down. You can't generate the neurotransmitter that helps support that system. So your digestion is not going to work right. Your sleep's not going to be that great. And since choline can also help prevent gallstones or a problem breaking down fats in your liver and the cholesterol can go up from there, not to mention just the backup of bile that backs up into the liver. And what's interesting about toxins in general, if we talk about chemicals in the environment, okay, a lot of these chemicals, whether they're pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, heavy metals, they're all considered endocrine disruptors, as well as being called estrogen disruptors because they mimic estrogen, which is another interesting point. Estrogen affects the fertility of someone. There is even a study of certain chemicals in the environment in a lake, which gave this exposure to frogs and they changed from male to females. And so another problem is the accumulation of these estrogens in our body. We become estrogen dominant, both men and women. And this can affect testosterone levels. It can create uh, breast tissue in men. And one really good antidote or remedy for that would be uh, to start consuming the phytoestrogens, like in the cruciferous vegetables. There's a lot of other plants that are phytoestrogens. Now, the phytoestrogens, what they do is they help to replace the dangerous estrogen with another estrogen that is less toxic or non-toxic. And so you're not going to become estrogen dominant if you consume phytoestrogens. They're going to help you by protecting you against the environmental toxic estrogens.
And so if you have this genetic problem, uh, a typical detox is not going to help you. You're going to have to be very, very clean. Even drinking alcohol or consuming too much caffeine, uh, your liver is going to have a hard time getting rid of that. Whereas a certain amount of mercury will affect someone in a certain way, that same amount of mercury exposed to your tissues can create a much bigger negative effect. So there's a very, very simple thing you can do if you have this problem, okay? All you need to realize is that the enzyme that is converting certain nutrients like folate to the active form is turned down. And if you start taking more folic acid in the right form and more of certain other vitamins like B12, for example, in the right form, and you also take choline, what's going to happen, you're going to allow that gene to work correctly. Okay. So a lot of these symptoms that you might have are going to go away. So it's a really simple solution. So this is what I'm going to recommend. Okay. For this genetic problem, there's some things you need to avoid for sure, like the synthetic folic acid in a lot of the enriched foods, multivitamins or the enriched nutritional yeast. That's why you want to get it unfortified because you want those natural B vitamins. So I will put a video down below for all those things. But as far as what to take, the type of folate you need to take is called methylfolate. And the type of B12 you need to take is called methylcobolamine. Then you need to take choline. And then I would highly recommend taking a natural B complex, okay? Not a synthetic one. You can also get these B vitamins from nutritional yeast, but just make sure it's not enriched or fortified. Magnesium is another cofactor that's going to be very, very important but you can get the magnesium in leafy greens because folate, especially the natural form of folate, naturally comes in the dark leafy green vegetables. And if we make those dark leafy green vegetables more cruciferous, we can also enhance the detoxification process because the cruciferous vegetables are one of the most potent ways to help your phase one, phase two detoxification system in the liver, which basically takes fat-soluble poisons and turns them into water-soluble particles that are non-poisonous. The cruciferous vegetables also have phytoestrogens, so they can also help balance this excess of estrogen as well. So I just wanted to bring up your awareness of a problem that's very, very common, but a lot of people don't know about it. Now, to get the full information about this um, enzyme, you should watch my other video, which I'm going to put up right here. Check it out.